joy j jesus first o others second and why you should be last third sunday of advent gaudate sunday reflection my dear friends so amidst the purple candles we light the pink candle we call this sunday gaudate sunday which means the lord is asking us to rejoice the second reading beautifully says rejoice always again i say rejoice you have to be carefully you have to carefully see this word rejoice this joy joy and happiness are two different things my dear friends happiness will depend on happenings happiness is in flux it changes according to the situation but when it comes to joy it's different galatians 5:22 the fruits of the holy spirit one of the fruits is joy so that joy is static is never conditional so because it's, it's it's from within it comes from within none can touch no one can steal it won't decay or rot so that joy the lord is asking us to have that joy in your life in our lives so it's a joyful expectation advent is a time of joyful expectation because lord is coming so of course there's a element of parousia second coming a scatological element where things are to happen yet not happened so that's exactly why the 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 second reading says the lord is at hand so it's it's a it's a scatological sense of the understanding so the lord is coming so that's exactly where in this preparation in the first sunday maranatha lord come we need you and second sunday how the voice from the wilderness asked to prepare a way a straight path in the wilderness and today we rejoice that because the imminent coming of the lord my dear friends so in this preparation if you want to have this true joy in your life you have to have to be your life should be in order disorder chaos caused by devil you must put things in order the priority of your life so for that you have to sometimes the lord may have to shake you break you shatter you it's painful so that's exactly the first reading the prophet sephania is inviting people to rejoice and exult with all your heart the daughter of jerusalem the lord has taken away the judgment against you so he has taken the judgment so normally sephania normally complains because they were into polytheism though they were in jerusalem he had to break them clean them so in that cleaning process he speaks about joy in that allegations complaints in the among those hard words yet the joy is intermingled there my dear friends so it's important when the voice from the wilderness came john the baptist they their hearts were pierced truly that word became a double edged sword where they were tested shaken my dear friends so here we find them people asking what then shall we do what shall we do so in in acts chapter 3 verse 37 38 after the first speech of peter they were they were they were the hearts were cut to the heart the words cut to the heart the hearts were open, break open so in that brokenness they are they ask the same question what shall we do so in this advent this question should be a must in your life the word word from the wilderness should shake you that you should realize there is no straight path in your life the wilderness is 
is a mess. So you should, that word should challenge you. Challenge you to ask, Lord, what shall I do? My dear friends, when it comes to John Gospel, Gospel of John, the same, same incident is placed in a different way. Sadducees, Pharisees and high priests, they ask questions from John. From where? From where? How? Uh, uh, and why you baptize? And like many questions were asked by John. So see the spiritual arrogance. So, so here in the gospel today, tax collectors came, soldiers came, ordinary people came and asked what to do. Not the priests, not the hierarchy. No. They were, they were, their arrogance and their pride was never tested. So if you, so Advent is a time where you realize that I am wrong. Where you should go to the Lord and ask, what, what should I do? My dear friends, so it's, the true joy comes when you completely surrender yourself to the Lord. So the challenge is different. The Lord, the, the, so John the Baptist says, whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none. And whoever has food is to do likewise. And tax collectors, they were not asked to do away with their jobs, no. But then asked to do it rightly without any unjust. Soldiers were asked the same to do. Do not extort money from anyone or by threats or by false accusation. Be content with your wages. So this is, so joy, this joy is in you, my dear friends. So the Lord who came is going to come, he's in with you. So that joy is found then and there. He said the thieves on the right side, today you are going to be in the kingdom with me. So the Lord is with you. Realize it. Realize it. But then, so it's, it's, it's always the message is with connection, connection to another person. You love. Imagine, think about Matthew chapter 25, my dear friends. I was hungry, you gave me to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. I was naked, you gave me some clothes. So that's, that's, that's exactly the same thing, isn't it? So that's, your, that's what you are expected to do. Incarnation, Emmanuel, Lord became flesh and lived among us. So he became a person to love and to be loved. And that's exactly the calling. In this preparation, true joy lies in your sharing. My dear friends, St. Paul was in prison. Letter to Philippians is a captive letter. And from there he says, rejoice always. How he gives, how he gives the, how he boosts the people. How he become a buck up to the people, see. It's beautiful, isn't it? And he ex clearly says, rejoice always. Rejoice in the Lord always. So this, this joy comes in relation to the Lord. And always. It never changes. So that's the gift of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And he says, do not anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, the Lord is at hand. So that's, that's exactly worry won't add anything to your life. No. By worrying, you won't get anything. This is one of the terrible things that you worry. And the Lord is here, do not be scared. He's coming. So having the promise in your life, Prepare yourself. John is saying, I baptize you with water. But one who is coming is going to come. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So that's the true conversion. Preparation for a true conversion. Fire will consume. Fire will energize. Fire will transform. Holy Spirit is going to be, para is going to be the paraclete. To be with you always. So let's prepare ourselves. Joyful expectation for the coming of the Lord. Amen. May God bless you.